I'm not the biggest fan of racing games. Most are tedious and boring, the gaming equivalent of white noise where all you do is drive around in circles. However, good racing games like Gas Guzzler's Extreme, F-Zero GX and Sonic All-Star Racing Transformed are among my favourites. A while ago when looking for a new driving game to play on the PC, a friend recommended Assetto Corsa. Later it appeared on Steam Free Weekend and it was bad. Look at this screenshot, the HUD is a complete mess and the gameplay wasn't fun either. It was also really difficult. I couldn't even win the first race. But one thing it taught me was that a little presentation goes a long way. I started to get nostalgic for Gran Turismo, the real driving simulator. This game was everywhere when I was a kid and while me and my friends played it a lot, I don't recall ever finishing it. Now it's time to change that. I'm playing on emulator, I couldn't find the PAL version so the US 1.1 version is the version I'm playing. It's the same game as far as I can tell, although I hadn't heard the feeder song Sweet Sixteen, which I remember me and my friends making fun of as a kid. I assume it was removed for some reason, maybe they couldn't get the license in America, who knows. Playing this game for the first time in years, there was the big nostalgia hit of and but enough about that let's get onto the game and see if 33 year old me can do better than teenage me to be clear the goal here is to see the end credits i'm not trying to get 100 percent or buy all the cars or anything like that but first is one of the reasons I never really got far in this game as a kid, and that was the licenses. Everybody hated these things, and I remember there being a lot of them. However, there's only three licenses here. I guess they didn't get crazy with them until the later games. It took a few tries, but soon I had both the B license and the A license. Take that, young Sabre. Though I struggled with the final license, E International. I guess that some track memorization was required, so I thought I'd come back later. Now for the actual game itself. My first order of business was to buy a second hand car. After some more nostalgia. I did what teenage me used to do. Keep searching the auto trader until a Nissan Skyline or a Subaru Impreza turns up within my price range and let that carry me through the early game. Where my strategy was different from my younger self and friends was that instead of spending all my money on upgrades straight away I would keep it until I needed it for stuff. Not that I had any money for upgrades at this point. The plan was working. It was hard fought but I won the first cup and was surprised by the amount of money I got. That one victory was enough to pee off the car and give me some money left over. At first I wondered why young me grinded the early events so much if they were paying out such large amounts. Then I realised there wasn't really any other events I could compete in. There were some available, but every event I tried my car was outclassed. I was also surprised at how few events there were compared to the later games. However, with these larger payouts I did the Sunday Cup again and I didn't do so well. So I bought an upgraded gearbox and tried again. The winnings were enough for me to buy the most expensive standard Subaru available. With my shiny new Scooby Dooey Preza, I was off to the higher tier races, or so I thought. I could barely keep up in some races and was completely outclassed in others. Still, all these lost races got me some money. With taking second place in the normal car event getting me 10 grand. It was time to do what the game is best known for, upgrades. I'm not the best at racing games, but I'd say I'm above average. I know what a racing line is, I know the importance of braking, etc. I put this down to my dad and my brother being car nerds. My brother even appeared in a car magazine because of his custom Nissan Cube. I also picked up the basics of how to tune a car in games like this. I don't know what suspension stiffness does or how to best set it up, but I know enough not to fall into the trap of just buying turbos and the thing that gives the most horsepower. 
With that, I focus mostly on sports and semi-racing upgrades. The reason being is going for full racing upgrades all the time can be a bad thing if your car is not powerful enough to take advantage of them. At very least, I'm not going to be wasting money on upgrades I don't understand. For example, I could get a custom brake controller, but I don't know how to set that up. At least the sports brakes don't require any setup, so I can't mess them up. Same with suspension. With my upgraded Scooby-Doo, I'm competitive again and soon I'm raking in the golds and the cash. From this point on, I basically fell into a groove. Do an event a couple of times to get enough money for a car and or upgrades to do the next. Once I had a track reasonably memorised, I'd go and have another go at the A International licence tests. As I played the game, I noticed a few quirks. First, while individual races have tiered rewards, if you don't come first in a cup or an event, you get nothing, and are unceremoniously dumped back to the event screen. Even tying for first gets you nothing. It's kind of funny, but also a bit annoying. Second, because I'm playing a double resolution on a PS1 emulator, I noticed that there's a few level of detail changes on the cars as they drive away from the camera. I never noticed that before. I'm guessing it's hard or impossible to see at its native resolution. One minor annoyance is that as you get into the higher tiers of competition, the game's physics start to break down a bit. In the early and mid game, there were times where if you take a corner too aggressively and hit the rumble strip, the car would almost flip onto its side, but the higher tier cars feel like they're more sensitive to this. It makes already hard to control cars even tougher to handle, and the computer drivers rarely seem to be affected by it. The game also loves its replays. It asks you twice after every race if you want to watch the replay, and both times the cursor defaults over being over the watch replay option. One of the biggest problems though is that the events have no explanation of the entry requirements or the level of competition. Some are easy to figure out, like the four wheel drive event, but others make less sense, like the lightweight event. What is considered lightweight? The picture shows a Mitsubishi FTO, but if you don't recognise the car, then you're stuck. And are those cars tuned or stock? I don't know. The game doesn't say. Even when you get into an event, you'll be left in the dust if your car is not competitive, so you're usually better off just quitting out the entire event at that point. Eventually, I got my A International license, but the later events are trial and error on whether or not your car is competitive. Even driving the same cars the competition isn't enough in some races. I will admit I looked up a guide and videos to figure out what cars I needed and how to get them. During this I bought a Dodge Viper and managed to keep it under control. Most of the time. Still, as a teenager I liked the Dodge Viper but I was never any good at keeping it under control. But here I was, not only driving the Dodge Viper and keeping it under control, but winning. Who says being an adult sucks? I also bought an FTO to win the front wheel drive event and the lightweight event, and my prize was the world's ugliest car. From watching speedruns and using guides, I learned that you could win a TVR from the Japan vs UK event, which in turn can be used to win the endurance race. Playing on an emulator with save states helped me save time on the endurance event as I could try and figure out my pit stop strategy without having to restart the race every time. Eventually I won, getting a disappointing amount of money and a new car. So it was time for me to enter the final cup. I won and the credits rolled. If that sounds a bit anticlimactic, that's because it kind of was. I wanted to triumphantly say, it might have took the best part of 20 years, but now I could see I beat Gran Turismo. But I wasn't filled with some great feeling of satisfaction afterwards, at least not as much as I expected. It was good to finally see the credits, but not much more so than any other game. I struggled to think of why, but after a few days I think I figured it out. The end of the game isn't very satisfying to play. 
Sure, I didn't win every race in the final cup, and some were fairly close, but as mentioned earlier, by that point in the game it felt almost like trial and error. There would usually be one or two cars on the grid that outclassed everything else, and with the right car on the right track, you can curb stomp your opponents with ease. For beating the game, I unlocked some events called Hi-Fi. This is some kind of low graphics time trial mode that runs at 60 FPS. I don't really have much to say about it, but for whatever reason, I find it interesting when console games have settings like this. I don't know, I just think it's cool that they included it at all. And with that, I'm done with Gran Turismo. Like I said, I'm not going for 100% completion. I could go back and do the events I missed, those being two endurance races and the tuned car event. I could also do the arcade mode, but I think I'll pass. Gran Turismo was a fun game, but like Battle Towards, I doubt I'll go back and play it again. It's a long game and the licenses are both difficult and not really fun. As for the game itself, it's fun and it holds up well even without the nostalgia goggles. If anything, I think the biggest thing preventing me from recommending it is that it's been surpassed by modern games like Forza, Grid and of course the Gran Turismo sequels. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.